my video flag for having copyrighted music in the background. <laughs> Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. I'm Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we're live from Takeover Coos Bay. Takeover Coos Bay. It's cold. <laughs> it and, is and, a and, city on the ocean, and uh, it's it's representing itself well. And it's not too windy, but we did manage to set up our podcast at the windiest point in Coos Bay. Yeah, if you look over here, we got the big bridge, we got the bay, we got the small bay over here, we got the wind coming over the hill here. The big bridge. It has a name. We're going to get letters. Oh, Jesus. I'm from Washington, people. I don't, I don't know the name of the bridge. I was just going to call you out <laughs> on it. So. Uh, it's the bridge that should never be finished. Yeah. Is what it is. It's always under construction. So. So this is my 1800th, uh, 1800th takeover. This is your first. How are you 1800th. feeling? 1800th. Yeah. How was it in uh, 1918? Whatever it was. Sick. <laughs> Them buggies working pretty good on the sand. For sure. <laughs> Doing yeah. chariot races on the dunes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ben Hur style. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. you, how you feeling about it? You digging it? You know, I love it out here. Um, I love being at the events. I love being with the with the different vendors and the and the people that, you know, we we all have these kind of like little groups of uh, superstars in our own hearts, right? We got we got people just tearing it up, and they're not really celebrities or anything, but you know, they're the ones that go have fun with. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're you're, fi- you're you're starting to see how this whole Chad thing's having an impact. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. People people uh, shouting me out as I'm walking down vendor row. <laughs> Yeah, I, I respond to the nickname now. I, I'm not. I don't like it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going to take I, a little bit of credit here because you used to no, be Ian, the full throttle guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I was actually talking to somebody about it last night that we needed to like change it to like Brody or Bodie or something. Just Brody, just something, yeah, something gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> that would fit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we're uh, we're on top of the. Um, I think the whole event sponsored by Ford, aren't they? Yeah, we got the Raptor experience below us, which I haven't partake partook in, and I want to. We'll have to go down there and check yeah. it out, do some GoPro, and throw it over top of the podcast. It'll yeah. be cool, for sure. But for uh, sure. yeah, Takeover sponsored by uh, Ford this year was a big deal for them, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So our show is sponsored by. Pause for awkward silence. I'll hold the logo. That's ah, full throttle battery. There you go. Full, Full throttle, throttle brought battery. us out here. Full so throttle big, battery. big shout out to you guys. And Always you, uh, a big shout out. You guys brought the crew and they're out in the tent right now. Yeah. Holding it down. A couple of these guys getting their first experience on sand too. So I'm stoked. You know, it's, uh, it's And their a- first experience was riding with Chad. <laughs> How'd that go? <laughs> Went pretty well from what I understand. Yeah. yeah. Except their, their head prints are in the roof now. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I got asked yesterday, uh, how come you not? Because so Full Throttle has a new pro. It's a XP pro, a pro XP four seater. And we, uh, we're about 30% done with it, but uh, we, we did put long travel on it and we've been kind of testing it while we're out here and we've made a ton of adjustments to it, which a huge shout out to 208 Off-Road. Uh, 208 Off-Road has the old preload game on lockdown, man. And uh, he uh, wrenched on it a couple of times and now it, it sits like a monster truck which is perfect it's for the whoops out here at all times yeah yeah and with the long travel on the two the 2.0 2.5 setup on the walkers it kind of exceeds the capacity of those shocks for sure and uh you know adding a bunch of preload and getting it higher up and letting those shocks taking a little bit of load off those shocks to where they don't have to do as much work has been it's been amazing like the the difference between day one on our day one rips versus where that car is at right now it's a different car yeah and and we've threw some paddles on it as well cst thank you and uh octane toy box thank you <laughs> for sure <laughs> once again yeah. rich coming to the rescue hey rich <laughs> thank you thank Thanks. you thank you for making me gnarly <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah we've taken a whole bunch of people out for some test rides in it and stuff and uh the feedback's been great i've got had a lot of passengers hop out of the car after we're done shaking scared heard some screams <laughs> uh, scare rides yeah yeah i got asked actually what i was prefacing is i got asked why we didn't put it in the show and shine well first and foremost it's only 30 percent done Right. And second, it's not here to look good, dude. Right. It's here to scare people. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm loving that car out here. So we've uh, we got the HDR long travel. Yep. And that uh, puts I, it at 72 inches. Every bit. Yeah. 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 It's and probably not there right now just based on the adjustments that we made. But yeah, sure. it's, it's... It sucked in a little bit yeah, when it got higher. Yeah. It's, it's up there. Um, uh, we got Eibach springs on it. We've Full got hit. RCV, RCV rears. The RCV front should be here in about two to three weeks, somewhere in there. Rona's um, uh, holding our fronts hostage yep, at the moment. Yep. Um, what else? 
It's got uh, a lot. You got a Brick City. Uh, Brick City Fab Cage. Yep. Um, got a TMW bumper that just sets that sucker off, man. It's that thing's a beast. It's so cool. I like how it has the D-ring tie, round, tie downs on it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I noticed that when I was actually there when Rich was plugging those in. I'm like, yeah. whoever thought of that was thinking ahead. Yeah, man, for sure. Thinks, that thing's slick. And but the nice thing is if you have them in your trailer and you forget the ones that go on the bumper, you just pull one off the side of the trailer yeah. put it in there. So what are your thoughts on that thing's power? Because uh, we were loaded up with four people in it and we're getting everywhere. We're holding speed. You know, the car will maintain a lot of momentum with that long travel, you know, right. but, uh, you know, it's still got some pickup even with some weight in it. So one of the things that people don't realize is that uh, the, the passenger capacity of these cars is rated in the overall capacity of the car. So when you look at the specs on the car, they'll say like 600 pounds for a four seater. That only equates to 150 pounds a person. Sure. And we're big boys out here in we the are. Northwest. And, right. uh, and so we had those cars, that car hit, car hitting the ground a bit. Let's uh, let's think of a nickname for it. I was thinking like Fat Guy Freight Train. Ooh, Freight Train. Yeah, yeah that might work. We'll yeah. have to come up with something. Chub well, Chubby Wagon? Hmm. I don't like that one. Not That's, so much. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll come up with something. We'll come up with something. We'll think but, of a uh, nickname for that thing. Oh, for sure. The the beast that it is, it deserves one. Once it well, gets it, started. it's an eye turner, man. And I think what it is is all the preload in it. People will come in and, and realize that they're getting into that thing probably higher than most pickup trucks. What's interesting is that Pro has that like ascending foot transfer. Like when you go from the door into the cab, yeah. it, like the old XPs, they kind of went down. And on the pros, they go up. So you're actually having, on a pro in, in general, already having to step higher. And then it's already preloaded, what, 16, 17 inches off the ground? For sure. <laughs> so uh, then and the, the thing is, is that so they're rated for 600. And we had four full-size guys in there. That's way over that. Yeah. And uh, then we had the long travel. And the long travel is what compresses the shocks faster than normal because uh, you got a lot more wheel travel. And uh, and so the bottom of the car just it gets lower faster. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we I, definitely need to adjust it, and it's for working sure. pretty good now. I, think I, lo you I love it where it's at right now. You know, I'm, I it, I think that I want I want to gut it. I want to I want to ditch those shocks. I want to put some 2.5 3.0 combo on it. Maybe like some Kings or some Fox or something. Of course, everyone in the industry right now is about five to twelve weeks out on all products. But uh, I think if we were to throw some Kings on that thing, I think we would you know we would just add some power to it and have one of the gnarliest pros in America, man. I the think Kings for sure would be sick. sweet. Those new RC2s from Fox would be sweet. Um, and putting those all the way around. Yeah. Maybe even IQS, something that doesn't have the dynamics. I, th um, I think Kings, like, uh, I think Kings would set it off just because it's pretty unique. You know, uh, Fox, I love Fox. I run, I have Fox on everything I've ever driven, but, uh, you know, we're not beholden to anybody. We're not sponsored by anybody. <laughs> We're not so it's sponsored. one of the yeah. Hashtag I mean, not sponsored. You know, I'm not going to say that. You know, creating talking points and stuff like that, especially if those talking points are centered around things that function really well. Right. You know, I I I want a car that I can go 80 to 90 through the whoops with, 100. Yeah. percent I like. Uh, You're almost there. Uh, we got a little. Way. I mean, by myself, I can hold some serious speed out there for sure. I, I don't want to do that with anybody else in the car, you know, just because. But, uh, you know, we did a flash on it. We did a little Evo tune. Uh, Evo's here at the event. Yep. And uh, they did just a little stage one. And I noticed it kind of cleaned up the throttle response. Yeah. But you really don't know what those things do until you put them on dirt. Right. You know? Yeah, the stage one's really going to only kind of do that whole clean up on the low end to get it a little bit more uh, a little bit more throaty and, and out the door faster but it, it revs differently you yeah. know i i, I want to say the uh i want to say the basically like the rev limiter is different than over yeah it opens it up a bit yeah. with the yeah. top end you know what i should have just had you there because they they told me everything once again they just they told me everything that the tune would do and uh, i'm just like does it go fast <laughs> <laughs> well let's scare them more yeah, that's pretty much all I'm concerned. It with, needs so. a, a scare score on all the yeah. all the Evo. Evo on all your tunes. We need a scare score of which one makes people scared more. Like a Richter, uh, what is it? The Richter scale? Yeah, we could do like an earthquake scale on it. We got hit by a wind gust a minute ago where this trailer was rocking. I'm like, is this the earthquake that the tsunami? <laughs> this is the tsunami. At, we're about to get taken out here. That yeah. was weird. I, I've never been out here and seen tsunami signs before. That was weird. You never have? No. I've only been here for years, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, we're here at Takeover, and we got the car here. You got uh, you also had your X3 here, or it's still here, but <laughs> you said had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I almost feel like it's not the not the same car anymore. No, it's hey train. And uh, it, this is called Boxcar Hill here because there's train tracks, as and, you can uh, hear. And we have a friend visiting us, and he's crossing the street. So uh, he's rolling coal, man. So he's across the street now, so we How should be good. How rude. 
blue. I, I talked to everybody about the volume level here at the event until, except for that guy. Except for the train dudes. Yeah, I, I didn't see the train coming. I know. Those, those cars are empty. Yeah. Yeah, he's not even hauling anything. No, but he was crossing the street, so he had to warn us. Gosh. Freaking A. So, uh, yeah, X3. Where's that at? So, <clears throat> we went out filming, and uh, we got invited to film with the Revma guys again. And so the Revma guys have been doing kind of the, you know, footage with a handful of uh, influencers and companies that work out here. And, you know, some of them are out there doing some gnarly stuff, some wheelie stuff, some jump stuff, some drop down stuff. And they approached us about wanting to go do something. And I was like, well, have you filmed on the ocean yet? And they said, no, we haven't even been out there yet. I'm going, well, dibs, you know, because <laughs> we've got the two full throttle cars. We can just do some battling out there, do some overtake stuff. And uh, we went out there and we got some really, really good stuff. Um, Bam Bam, who's been on the show, uh, was driving the X3 for a little bit there and uh, had an unfortunate mishap with a stump that took out a radius rod. We haven't got eyes on it yet. Just we retired the car for the week. And uh, it's, sheared off the tow bolt yep. and all that. That typically comes with those X3s if you don't uh, reinforce them. Yeah, I don't know if the scat survived, and we don't know if the knuckle survived yet. But uh, the guys right behind us at Superior Motorsports are going to take delivery of that car on Sunday and probably have it from, any, from anywhere for a week to two months. I told them I've got no timeline on the car because we don't have anything scheduled that it can't be done in the pro right now. Right. And, uh, you know, I've got a huge list of stuff that I want them to do. Uh, they have an employee there named Greg. And Greg has a 2020 X3 that is running a Wayland kit that, for whatever reason, they trust me to drive. And uh, I don't know if trust is the right word, no, but willing he, to he, let you. Yeah, he, he trusted me. <laughs> like, I took a couple people out in that thing, and I went for a rip in that thing, and it's just on a different level. I mean, I want to say, they're, they were telling me that it's 280 to the wheels. Yeah. And I believe it. Yeah, yeah, that thing's yeah. fully built. I mean, stuff that in my X3 I would have to really charge into to compress the, the front to get it to come up and wheelie on. There's none of that with that car. Just in the la there's no lag, none whatsoever. You just instant you, response, huh? Instant response, man. What's and, that do to the front end? Uh, it goes. Yeah, twelve o'clock if you want to. Honestly, it'll, it'll roll itself over backwards if you're not if you're not careful, but where it really really shines is on downturns. Like I, I took it up a couple of dunes, did a downturn, and just pinned it coming out of it and ever done a downhill wheelie on a side-by-side -side? <laughs> not me that's gnarly yeah i look yeah. forward to doing it oh buddy that thing goes it's yeah. it's on a different level it's a stock suspension though right and, and i've i know a lot of lines out there and some of the lines out there have really really bad hits at the base yep. as, as you've experienced yep. and uh you got to show that thing some love because honestly it gathers momentum so much that if you plow into the face or come down into a g out or something like that you could just destroy i mean there's a car literally right over my shoulder my right shoulder over here that is just tacoed you know and it's probably from doing something like that just slamming into the face slamming and just in, yeah. took it out yeah yeah there's been a lot of cars taken out uh even just in the first couple of days we were here you mm -hmm. know they were just one after another walking down to <laughs> vendor row looking for parts yeah you know what's funny is some of the some of the critical parts and stuff kind of like what we brought or what we broke um those aren't easy to source but a few of the guys down here have have some solutions for it you know like when you remember how tough it was just to find an a-arm when yeah. when i broke that one on the washington bdr i feel like there's probably a couple people here if we had a problem like that they probably had a solution for us you know uh in the industry it's it's an interesting problem because the, all the dealerships they want to sell the upgrades right they don't want to just carry oem they want to sell steering wheels and all sorts of different yeah, accessories and so bags and then you have rona you know doing her thing on the industry and so literally even the people with the upgrades don't have them in stock anymore so um you know shout out to all the to vendors that are, are trying to keep up with the demand and all that stuff i know like the guys at uh zrp and, and sector seven and, and all those guys that are doing like in america built cnc type stuff are just inundated with demand yeah and uh it's almost near impossible for them to even catch up let alone get more sales because it's just going to bury them deeper yeah yeah uh it, it, it I don't, I don't know what we're at from a turnout standpoint. I mean, the weather's probably going to have it say, you know, today it's supposed to be sunny, tomorrow it's supposed to rain. Got a great turnout nonetheless. You know, right. I, I mean, it's it's not 
I don't think the, the numbers are going to be in line with what the show does in June, but considering it's almost Halloween, considering school's back in session, I think yeah. I think the show's doing great. I think show uh, school really put a hamper on the ability for a lot of people to be flexible with the show. Yeah, and we'll see what happens today. You know, it's still early today. You know, by maybe three or four o'clock, we might start seeing some people that yeah. want to come the out for the weekend. Yeah, the weekend is officially yeah. here. Yeah, nice. Pl- nice thing about Coos is, is regardless of how many people are out here, there's some spots you can go disappear into and you won't see anybody. You know, so you can out go out there and go ride safely. Yeah, um, you know, I've never been out here to Coos. Uh, personally until this year uh, but I've been to Winchester a number of times yep. and, uh, even though they're what 10-15 minutes apart they're completely different from each other yeah you know what's funny is I think I think it would take longer to drive from where we're at to the stage area at Umqua the RV uh, hookup I think it would take longer to drive a truck there than it would a side by side yeah, if you could just hit the beach or hit the back right trail there. Yeah, yeah, it's um, a pretty straight line. But there's unfortunately, a, they're not officially connected. But well, they are connected. It's just I want to say there's a, a a protected area in between. Right. And it's a subject of controversy right now because uh, there's an invasive species that's moved in. Invasive grass has moved in. Right. And so there's people in our court basically saying, "Hey, open that area up because side by sides will take care of that. <laughs> we'll take care of that yeah. problem. And, I, and it's not even something that would be deliberate. It would just happen. Right. And. Uh, I've seen those dunes. I mean, if you're on the if you're on the south end of Winchester Bay, you can you you see where that closed off area is. Yep. Believe me, I want to go rip it for sure. It looks good. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, it's definitely a different terrain out. Winchester is wide open, big dunes, big hits, and uh, out here there's a lot more uh, vegetation and islands and and uh, you Trails. never really open up more than I don't know five. I I don't think we've ever gotten open more than ten seconds. Yeah, there's a couple of spots you can do it, but just the way that this, the condition of the sand is right now, it's pretty, you know, right now, I would say yesterday, the sand was as blown out as it usually is on uh, on a Saturday or a Sunday on a typical. After a full weekend. Yeah, yeah, it's it's whooped out. Yeah. And there's there's a lot of people out there that really don't want to take take that on, you know, and we'll take it on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's part of why we adjusted the pro. Just send it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but what I've realized is that uh, I'm more, more partial to the wide open big hits. But if I was to bring my family, we could have a lot of fun out here. For sure. And going through all the little islands and the trees and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest part is there's a lot of blind corners out here. So you definitely yeah. have to be, you definitely have to be Especially careful. Especially during an event like this where there's just a ton of people big out. Big time. Yeah, I want to say that if you were to come out here in February, especially if they'd had some good weather for a little while, uh, all this place needs is a little bit of a little bit of wind, and it'll dry out a little bit. And the sand's amazing. Like when I got here Tuesday night, that's what the conditions were like. And and when you got here, we were throwing some sand in with the uh, up in the air with the X3. It's not that it's not like that now. You no. know, the, the, a lot of moisture's gotten into the sand, and a lot of people have been on the sand and there's ruts everywhere yeah. you know so not that i'm complaining that's that's duning so right we actually had a conversation the other day or yesterday about you know dune life is just there's things that happen out here and you got to be ready for it yeah. and uh one of those is the conditions of the sand always changing and always yeah. throwing a loop into your or wrench into your your you know plans so um yeah when you when you come out to an event like this one of the biggest things you have to remember is just that there could be somebody around that lip around that yeah corner around the tree whatever yeah. or a big stump that'll take your suspension out that, that too you know <laughs> what, what's interesting is uh coos and winchester are so close together but two totally different riding areas you know I, sure. I i was telling people like i would prefer a four-seater out here i'd prefer a two-seater at winchester so it's uh definitely different so you've been coming around to the four-seater life that's where i come from and I, you were believer. sold on the two-seater and now you're, you're uh, total believer now yeah yeah what do you think about the trails in a four-seater? Uh, they're great. No, I have no problem hooking a line, holding a line. Because um, you came from North Washington on a, on a shoot on the four-seater. Mm-hmm. And uh, how'd that all play out? Oh, uh, destina- we- with Destination Polaris. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it went good. Car, car did what we needed it to do. I uh, We just finished it, yep. literally right before 24 you got here. to 48 hours earlier. And, uh, you know, so you're always, li- you're just it's lingering in the back of your head and uh we had to so so destination polaris has been talked to you know by polaris polaris is trying to push them to do some overland content and that's what we were doing on that shoot and the car did great man it's uh we put it together you know how you and i are when it comes to prep and stuff (laughs) like that having a car done for an expedition 24 hours before you leave is not the most reassuring feeling but the car did great right Hey, Rich. 
Great Once job on again. Great, great job on that, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Octane Toy Box. Schedule um, was not your friend on this whole uh, venture. Yeah, the, it's, it, it nothing lined up. You know, it was uh, when we got the car, we started ordering parts for it before the car even arrived, and they showed up literally three days to four days before we were set to shoot. So, right. thanks to Octane for pulling that one off. That was right down to the wire. Yeah. So. Um, good times and we've been scrunching on a lot of road miles to get things done and uh we get, we're here in in, uh, in coos bay oregon north bend oregon um and uh this it's a great little town i i, I love it up here oh, I, if it wasn't for the government out here i'd probably move here <laughs> i wouldn't let the, i wouldn't let the government slow me down I, I, <laughs> but i will I do a shout out to uh them letting the event happen i mean for how sure. hard was it for steve and jim to get this event put together and well they got the green light from the uh the health board I want to say that's a county thing, and I think the only thing that they were waiting on was something from the Forest Service, and it got green lighted, and couldn't be happier. And Every, they only had like a month to like finalize sure. everything. No, everybody's stoked, man. You can tell. Everybody's glad that it went off, and everybody's having a great time out here. And it's so good just to get out and be in the community again. No doubt. We're, you know, we're so used to being you know every other month at an event doing something. And uh, we haven't had that for yeah. six, seven months. Yeah. And I've been on the coast for it's over a week now. You know, I, I, I made one quick trip home to go pick up the trade show booth, the full throttle trade show booth. And uh, the week earlier, you know, I'd been on Winchester. I was did a little family vacation in Winchester. And that was really the first time I got to test out the Pro and the, uh, the X3 since we resprung it on uh, Winchester. Oh, because you got... Um therapy springs on yeah. your x3 now yeah we had those therapy springs for like two months three months four i was months, telling you we got to get them bad boys on there it's a different game when well, you I get mean, springs what what happens is that you know i i just want to park the x3 at your house and just see what happens you know <laughs> it might sh magically sh transform yeah, just like show up the, a couple days later hey the springs are on <laughs> yeah let's get it done next time go zach <laughs> but uh yeah how's the car after the springs springy yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, whoops, it handles whoops better, but it's really springy in whoops. And I was talking to a couple dudes about it. Uh, when you throw it into a corner, like if you throw it into a left hander, the outside right really bites in and wants to pitch the car. And uh, I got a few recommendations. I'm not a the only suspension experience and stuff that I have is on motocross. Yeah. And, uh, motocross is significantly easier than a car i one found. triangulation versus <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm sure it's easy i just haven't dedicated time to learn about it and all that but uh, a couple guys gave me some recommendations on what to expect from certain adjustments and uh but where it's at right now it's fun out here but it's not great in winchester it's unreal because winchester has a lot of hits a lot of stuff that you can hit at speed that'll get the just basically get the car uh basically get the car actuating um get it the flex it's springy it uh there's a lot of hits there's a lot of jumps there's a lot of witch eyes and that car is an animal at winchester right what the way it's set up like it's pretty stiff right now and, and on those big ones you can really squish in and get it going yeah, hard it, it was not a predictable car jumping with the stock springs and out at winchester i absolutely launched that thing a few times like uh there's this dune out at winchester called superman on the back side of it there was a really really nice approach on a jump that uh i, I was hitting at any speed and i worked up to about 60 or 70 and hit it and literally was locking up all four wheels on impact to keep from falling off the back side of superman <laughs> right i don't know how far it was but it was an uphill jump and it, we were just absolutely launching like we we would land so hard that sand would just explode all the way all around the car but those springs just eat it up yeah yeah so it's it's doing really well and you're running uh was is it 30s or 32 scats uh, 32 uh 32 inch destroyers if i remember right yeah okay yeah and those are speaking uh, of destroyed which uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> long night <laughs> <laughs> no it, it may it may be um i i think we lost a scat during that you think accident. it's gone yeah it could be yeah, yeah, when it took the, the, the tree. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you're down one car, but you still have the, f the four-seater, and it's uh, been pretty good to us. You've taken a few different groups of guys out uh, throughout the day and, and shown them a, a good time, as only you can. Yeah, I, I heard some screams. That's, <laughs> that's all I care about, There's some man. shaky hands like, coming out of that car. Like, like I said, man, I don't, I don't know if I'm fast. I don't need to know that I'm fast or anything like that, but it's, it, it is kind of fun to get validated like that when you take guys <laughs> off stuff. I mean, when you go out and pre-run and know a couple of lines that can – you know, that you That's can hold the some biggest pace thing on. is just knowing. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. And knowing you can do it. And for your sure. car can do it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I took uh, 
I took some of the Northwest UTV guys out. Shout out to those guys. Uh, uh, the Hellbent guys took the Hellbent guys out. Shout out to those guys. And, you know, Steven, Steven from Hellbent went for a ride. And Steven was just filming the whole time, dude. That guy went out to KOH. <laughs> You're not going to scare that dude. Yeah, yeah for he, sure. Yeah, he, he, and he can drive for sure, you know. And, but all those guys can drive. And it, it was fun kind of hearing some screams out of the backseat. <laughs> um, but, no, we had, we had a good time. Yeah, I, I was funny. We went out to go for a night ride, and I got in the back seat just to give the front seat up to, to uh, your buddy, and and I realized that I don't sit, I don't fit in the back seats uh, height wise. But it's, yeah, that's that's a, a result like, of the comfort cage. wise. I'm fine. It's just that, the height. That's something worth talking about. Is the pro? I mean, you and I are six four. Both of us could sit in the back of that comfortably. There's yeah. there's leg room. It works. Yeah. No, it's a great. And that car. cage is awesome when it has the grab handle and all yeah. that stuff. So. Uh, very comfortable back there. I just the height because it slopes down in the back. I was just uh, kind of pinned with for my sure. neck. So for sure. Um, but yeah, that was a good time. If yeah. you were to gauge this uh, type of event versus maybe some of the other industry shows, what what do you consider some of the differences between an event like this where it's it's free to show up and, and get in and uh, kind of visit all the vendors and all that stuff um, versus the ones that like like close everything down and, and you just basically pay to walk around. Yeah, so I assume you're talking about the difference between UTV Takeover and something like Sandsport or the International Off-Road Show. Um, both, I mean, UTV Takeover serves multiple functions. It's a riding event, but also a chance to socialize and network. Yeah. And whereas those other two events, you, you go there to network, and they're great events, no question about it. But being able to bring your machine to an event and network by way of going out on the dunes and being seen in a, mo in a rolling billboard essentially right um i'm talking from from a business standpoint you know it, this is this has been a great show for full throttle no, yeah. no doubt about it i mean all of our all of our cars have been uh, mobile billboards and you know if i'm going to go out there and rip i'm trying to pass people and stuff it's and <laughs> and go, get Look up on, yeah get up on top of dunes <laughs> and go battle with people and stuff uh getting past Get be, getting passed by the full throttle mobile billboard, it, it, it served us very well. Yeah, it does its job. <laughs> it does. Um, you know, one of the I, I just want to give the team that you know puts the show on a shout out because there's very few events where you can every day participate and be a part of the event for just about anybody. Like, yeah. I mean, Huck Fest, you're not going to be sending your car if you're not a hucker, right? Yeah. But you can go out and do short course. You can go do blind drive. You can go do uh, the poker runs or the, the treasure hunts. Or uh, last night they had, uh, what was that? Um, it's not karaoke bingo. It's uh, rock and, rock roll, and roll bingo. bingo. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot of fun. For sure. Um, it's just every day there's something, there's a schedule of things you can participate and be a part of the event. Whereas you're not just showing up and looking at the, the tents and the whatever yeah and on tuesday night they had the uh they had the industry ride yeah and you and i went on the yep. industry ride uh we mistakenly took the x3 and it was a mistake for two reasons one we had a windshield that just it it uh <laughs> the windshield's amazing it did its job but it also doesn't have a wiper once you get water on it yep. you're in trouble you know and i made the mistake of trying to wipe it off it only made it worse so i was driving back to camp don't do this i was driving back to camp without a harness on with my head out the window like ace ventura um, but in terms of the way that that car is sprung, with the way that the X3 sprung, we fought that car during those trail rides. You know, we yeah. got up on two wheels a couple times and uh, having to ride the sides yeah, and all yeah, that. Yeah, it was uh, like I said, it's it, it's sprung for hits right now and not for going left and right. I think if we were in the pro, we would have held held a lot more momentum. Oh, we did when we went back through there. We did. We killed. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So four, um, four seater, uh, four seater for the win on that one. For sure. Yeah. The fat guy freight train. I like that. It comes <laughs> it comes off the tongue really the well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we went on the industry ride. That was cool. Um, trains coming back. Speaking of trains. Trains coming back. Yeah. Expect a horn here in a second. Yeah. Um, but it was cool to see everybody out. Uh, Bouchard has his, uh, his little RS1. That thing's a tank. Funko guy yeah. thing going on. Yeah, we watched him get rear-ended, and I don't think they even the paint <laughs> yeah. chipped on that thing where it took the other car the out. The other car just <laughs> fell apart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that thing's a beast. 
Yeah, and that's it, awesome it rips car. too. You know, it's a it's it's a seventy two inch. Yep. No, it's not. I want to say Steve told me it's like seventy six inches. It's yeah. wider. Yeah, so it's a seventy six oh. inch RS one with a with a Funko kit on it. Uh, if you watch Destination Polaris or any of Rugged Radio's uh, social media, you've seen that car, and yeah. we got to see it in action, and it performs. That's a cool but, car. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. seeing it on the TV or YouTube or whatever is is one thing. Seeing it in person, you're kind of like it. Kind of, you're like how. That shape doesn't make sense, but that looks like a lot of fun. Oh, it looks amazing. <laughs> it looks amazing. Yeah. It's like a shoe. Yeah. It's cool. The, we got to see it on the industry ride right off the bat and we were out on the we were out on the ocean and it was funny because we we all took off and you and I are about halfway back, give or take, and I can't see much of anything out of the X three and I look at I look at Zach and I'm like, Hey, is there anybody on my right? He's like, No. I'm like Okay, good, because I'm going to overtake everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and we got up there. We passed everybody. Yeah. Um, that was about the time where you solidified your windshield not looking well. <laughs> yeah, that was after the first stop. I wiped it, and it was game over from there. You know, I think what it is is, is that some of that salt water from the ocean. It, it absolutely yeah, is. Yeah, it just cakes you. Yeah. So if you're, if you're ever out here on the beach wanting to do some running or, or in the dunes, just think about the salt water and how that affects your car. Well, if, and if you've got a solution for after that thing's been douched by salt water, hit us up. Uh, what, <laughs> I, what I've heard is use vinegar, like a, a vinegar that water solution. Yeah, I can see and, that. and you spray it in a spray bottle and wipe it Let down it soak and stuff. In and wipe it off. For sure, yeah. I can see that. Um, yeah, so what uh, we have a lot of vendors here. Uh, we have Addiction and Superior representing and, and selling all their products. So Superior's got a bunch of new custom stuff that they're making coming out. Uh, so look forward to that. I know they just talked. Uh, they just released their T-Bar for the Polaris uh, platform, uh, the XP platform. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, they got a lot of cool parts coming out uh, in the short term, I think. Yeah. Um, and then uh, who do we got? We got Super ATV here showing off their uh, billet stuff. We got uh, right down over here. We got Old Glory, which has a pretty sweet car. Um, if you've listened to the Ruslan talk about that car, and, and I posted some pictures of that. So and we have Can Am and Polaris here too. Can Am Polaris are doing demo yeah. rides, and uh, that's cool. So I might, if we can work it in, and the weather keeps up, uh, I might go try try that Smart Shock on the X3. Yeah, I'm here with a couple of coworkers, and I'm going to try and get it to where they can take off and go partake. They need to go test yeah, ride they need to go things. ride those things. You know, I will. I won't let them drive the company pro. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll just send them out in the, uh, send them out in the, um, uh, in the company, the, in the corporate the car, gu- the guided <laughs> car. Yeah. And what's funny is like, they weren't too, it, it, this is what cracked me up. We threw it out there. It's like, Hey, go sign up for a ride. You know, go take one of these things for a ride. This is what I think you should drive. And they were like, no, oh, no, no. And I'm just like, look, not all dooning is what I've subjected you to. <laughs> is it, is, it. it is what you make of it. Go have fun, get behind the wheel, find out what these things are all about. Yeah. That's the thing. Like everybody that has all like dismissed UTVs that comes from either moto or comes from, you know, trucks, big trucks or whatever. They've always dismissed UTVs and then they get in the seat of one like behind the driver's wheel and then they start understanding why UTV is so great. Right. Right. I'll tell you why new UTV isn't so great though, is when you walk around all these places and you start to see all the stuff that you need on your car. <laughs> this is a bad thing to come to. And if you, you start uh, to look at your bank account afterwards and <laughs> I mean, it, it, man, I mean, we're watching people walk through with parts. We're watching people walking through with swag. Uh, a lot of clothes get sold here. Yep. I mean, dude, hats off to uh, Superior and Addiction. You know, Superior and Addiction have not only made themselves into this thing where they're, you know, they're, they're supporting the industry, but they also have a cool brand. Oh, they yeah. have a cool logo. And it's not uncommon to see so many people out here wearing dedicated Superior and Addiction shirts, It's hats, funny. You, you drive hoodies. up and you're like, oh, is that another Superior yeah. car? No, it's just they love Superior. No, I mean, we're literally watching people walk out of their both of their booths with nothing but clothes, not parts, right. shirts, hats. Next thing you know, they're out there rocking them. Like I got a Sandcraft hat yesterday that was given to me. And I mean, it, it's weird how you wear that flag and you just get stoked on it and stuff. And obviously, sure. I'm not the ol- obviously I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's been a great event for sure. Yeah, this has been an awesome time, and we got a couple of days left to to complete. Uh, we got uh, Wheelie Fest, which should be a lot of fun. Hill Fest, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. Uh, hopefully the weather lets it dry up a little bit so that some roosts get some into the shots. On the on the hill fest, I am interested with the sand being as damp as it is. Yeah. How that's gonna go. Yeah. Well, after the first few guys, they might get lucky and get the tacky sand and then tear it up for the other guys. Could and be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but 
when sand's wet like this, it creates a lot of ruts. Yep. And ruts on hills. We'll tip you over. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So, uh, yeah, uh, great event. Uh, we're looking forward to having uh, Steve and Jim on at some point to tell their story about how this event started. This is not um, something that was like an industry, like we just want to get our brands out and make money thing. It was like a bunch of homegrown guys looking that, to have a good time. That wanted to party. Yeah. And I, I mean party. Like, <laughs> like party hard. Like party, yeah. Yeah, all real. day, all night. Yeah, let's, uh, let's blast some music, let's have some beers and bring all of our friends. And yeah. that turned into this. Yeah, so this year, uh, you know, they've been doing this for, was it five years, four years? Give or take, yeah. This is my third, if I remember right. Something. Yeah. And uh, every year it's bigger, every year it's better. This year they had to cancel the band and some other things uh, that you would normally have at this event. Well, it was was so guerrilla, like, right off the bat. It was was one of those things where, uh, you know, they, they weren't really charging cover charges or anything like that. And we checked in. I mean, they've, they've, they've got apps now. They've got scan stuff. They've, they're they're freaking dialed they're, now. You go talk to these yeah. guys. They're, it's evolved. They're completely, like, booked out on our schedule on getting things done. Yeah. But they everybody knows where they're supposed to be. Everybody knows what they're supposed to do. They got people under them that know what they're supposed to do. It, it works. No, it works for sure, you know. And, and what the, the only thing that hasn't changed about the event over the years is... And it's a testament to how what you just said about how dialed in they are is the fact that by nine o'clock, they're down there enjoying themselves, oh, yeah. having a few drinks, uh, just mingling. So they've they've scheduled in the fun time. Yeah, they got it. They got it. Um, they figured it out. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you haven't ever been to uh, one of the takeover events, uh, you have your all your community events all day long, and then once the sun goes down, uh, you're basically just a big party group doing stuff. Whether that be bingo, whether that be, you know, raffling or, or whatever. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was a good time last night. You guys all had a good uh, good time around the fire and, and talking with everybody and, and networking. Yeah, I actually uh, sold some batteries, so multiple function. Yeah, yeah you definitely yeah. got to work what you got. So, yeah. um, you know, that's the thing is <clears throat> it's funny sitting in your booth this week, hearing people come up and talk about, you know, they just bought an Odyssey. They just bought an Optima or whatever a month ago, three weeks ago, <clears throat> this summer sometime, whatever. And they're coming to your booth looking for an option because yet they are looking for a battery again. Right, right. Yeah, our battery does great in these conditions, man. It just vibration doesn't affect it. The only thing that will affect any battery of any chemistry is, is repeated discharge and abuse. And uh, actually, a uh, little shout out to my buddy Ken Dunnigan, a short course racer up here in the Northwest. He actually uh, sent me a message that Can-Am is going to be releasing the, uh, uh, the 2021 Stator which is like 750 plus watts as an upgrade and, and it's plug and play like on my car. Wow. So that's great. You That'd know? be awesome. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I, I'm looking forward to that. And that's definitely an upgrade that I'll do. That's something I worry about when we're on those mountain rides. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but batteries, you know, when you upgrade a battery, you're, you're upgrading to a, ba- you know, you're going to gain more, more often than not, you're putting in more capacity and the staters on these things really aren't, built to handle more capacity so the need to trickle charge those things becomes yeah. that much it's it exposes that need that much more so and uh, i've had a few conversations with guys that want to do like dual battery kits and all that and there's a lot of other things to consider when you start doing that too and uh, i think we're going to make a video about that i think we'll go to go through all the options and figure out what works best for which situation and kind of document that yeah uh when we get the x3 back whether it be in a, like I had said, whether it be a couple of months or a couple of weeks, that's going to have a different look under the passenger seat. You yeah. know, there's uh, we're we're putting in that Red Arc BC to DC charger along with the isolator, so that's going to be a talking point. That's going to be something that that I need to be super dialed in on uh, my dialogue as it relates to that Red Arc because that hasn't been done before. And uh, on a side by side, on a side by side, and uh, it's going to have some benefit, man, because. The augs, when you run a dual kit, you know, I just said that the stators aren't adequate enough for a, for more capacity. You, when you add another battery, that's just that just much making the more. bucket bigger. For sure, for yeah. sure. So. And then you got a lot of guys that want to do, you know, put the lights on one battery and the, and the cranking on the other battery and things like that. And if you don't have a proper isolation setup and a proper trickle setup, it's not going to work the way you expect it to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Superior is great about that sort of stuff from a from a wiring standpoint the guy that runs it's a guy named william and uh basically what i told william is anything that is causing you to stay up at night 
in regards to my wiring, just go ahead and fix it. <laughs> like he's, <laughs> he, he's self-admitted like a kind of OCD about wiring, and I've seen some of his work, and it's stunning. And we had to hurry up and get that put together for the trip, so there's a lot of wiring that could be redone on that car. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> just restating the obvious. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, anybody else we should talk about while we're here? There's plenty um, to talk about. Let's just save it for the next show, I think, man. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Yeah. So we also have uh, Sand Hollow coming up here soon. Uh, looking forward to that. That's uh, Is that their first time there? Uh, it is their first time there, and there's an event going on there right now. Uh, Trail Heroes going on, yeah. and I got a few people that are there, and they're sending me messages that yesterday was like 90 degrees, 95 oh, degrees, and I'm up here freezing. <laughs> I'm about to go to Walmart and buy a propane stove for the bo- the booth. So if it's if it's in the 80s or 90s in in a couple of weeks, I'm not going to be mad. Not heard about it. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love this kind of weather. I love sitting in my hoodie and chilling. Yeah, but when your hoodie's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, um, you know, we're, we're going to go out and rip some more, take some more photos, some more video. Uh, we'll put together a recap video and yeah. all that, and it uh, should be a good time. Uh, but if, uh, yeah, you ever have the opportunity to go out to one of these events and you haven't before, it's more than worth your while to at least just attend once or twice uh, throughout the year. Um, and if it's a big travel thing, um, get your camp spot early. They yeah. sell out pretty fast. For sure. Yeah, it's about 11 o'clock a.m. local time here, and we are. Um, I'm probably going to give it about another two hours for the clouds and stuff to burn off, and we'll go out and do a little bit more photo shooting and stuff of the Pro because we got some great shots of the X3, but uh, mm-hmm. the, the Pro, you know, like I said, we, it just gets better every day that we're out here from dialing it in and just talking to some of these guys that know what they're doing and just putting a little love into it and it's that's a big thing about these events is talking to people about what they're running what you're running what works what didn't work the last time like you don't get that through a facebook group you get a lot of keyboard warriors yeah that just know one thing and you can come out here and talk to guys that have been through the ringer a hundred times there's suspension gurus here there's uh, horsepower gurus here tire gurus here wiring gurus here it's everything so well it they're like turning up this the stereo behind us so yeah, I, yeah. I think that's our cue yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so until the next time time guys peace <laughs>